Hello everyone, welcome to Mastermind. Today let us look at more about Karnataka budget 2024-2025 in the second part of the series. So if you have watched the last video, you will be knowing what is the total receipt and then you will also be knowing what is the total revenue receipt and then capital receipts. So the total receipts is 3,68,674 crore rupees. Now this particular question says, according to Karnataka state budget 2024-25, what is the total estimate expenditure for the fiscal year 2024-2025? So now the receipts is 3,68,674 crore as we have seen in the last video. So what should be the expenditure? Expenditure will be usually more than the receipts. So of all the four options, which option is more than 3,68,674 crore? It is 3,71,383 crore. So the right option is option D here. So the total estimated expenditure for the fiscal year is 3,71,383 crore. So please write what is the total revenue receipts and capital receipts in the comment section. Also, please note down that this is the actual size of the Karnataka budget. This is the size of the Karnataka budget 2024-2025. Please note down that this particular question, what is the size of the Karnataka budget was asked in the last prelims. So this particular figure is important. Please note it down 3,71,383 crore. Now look at the second question over here. According to Karnataka state budget 2024-25, how much is the revenue expenditure for the fiscal year 2024-2025? So here the right option is option A, rupees 2,90,531 crores. So the right answer is the revenue expenditure for the fiscal year 2024-25 is mentioned as rupees 2,90,000. 531 crore. So just like receipts, how the receipts have capital receipts as well as revenue receipts, the expenditure, the budget expenditure also has two kinds of expenditure. The first one is the revenue expenditure. The first kind is the revenue expenditure and the second kind of expenditure is the capital expenditure. So according to the budget, the revenue expenditure is 2,90,531 crore. So what is this revenue expenditure used for and what is capital expenditure and what is capital expenditure used for? We'll see in the following questions. For now, please remember that the revenue expenditure for the budget year 2024-2025 is 2,90,531 crore. Third question says, according to Karnataka state budget 2024-25, what portion of the total expenditure is attributed to capital expenditure? So here, the right option is option B, rupees 55,877 crore. So the capital expenditure for the fiscal year 2024-25 is mentioned as rupees 55,877 crore in the budget. Now we have seen how much is capital expenditure and how much is revenue expenditure. Now let us see what these expenditures are used for. According to Karnataka state budget 2024-25, what is the amount allocated for loan repayment? So the right option over here is option C, 24,974 crore. Loan repayment for the fiscal year 2024-25 is mentioned as rupees 24,974 crore, 24,974 crore. So if you add all these things, the revenue expenditure plus capital expenditure plus loan repayment, you will get the total expenditure, which is 3,71,383 crore. And this is also the size of the total budget. Look at the fifth question now, which of the following is part of revenue expenditure? So capital investments, loan repayments, routine expenses like salaries and maintenance, infrastructure development. So now you will know what revenue expenditure is used for. Capital investments, as the name itself says, it comes under capital expenditure. Loan repayments, we have already seen in the Karnataka budget, how much Karnataka government is going to pay as loan repayments. The funds used for infrastructure development also comes under capital expenditure. So the right option here is option C, routine expenses like salaries and maintenance. So revenue expenditure typically includes routine expenses like salaries and maintenance. The examples for revenue expenditures are salaries, salaries given to government employees, wages, and then pensions given to retired employees. 
subsidies that are given to farmers and then interest payments interest payments all this come under revenue expenditure of all this you have to remember that subsidies and interest payments they form of revenue expenditure not capital expenditure very very important put five stars for this subsidies and interest payments they come under revenue expenditure not capital expenditure what does capital expenditure primarily involve day to day operational expenses long term investments and asset acquisition paying interest administrative costs so usually if you have learned the concept very well then you will be stuck between paying interest and long term investments and asset acquisitions so because as i've already seen day to day operational expenses they come under revenue expenditure administrative cost is also a part of operational expenses therefore even this comes under revenue expenditure but paying interest since you are paying the interest for loans and since loans do not come under revenue receipts you will be confused but please remember that paying interest is going to be under revenue expenditure only even this comes under revenue expenditure because whenever capital expenditure happens either the liability decreases liability decreases or the financial assets increases financial assets of the government increases when you are paying interest your liability is not decreasing because you have to pay the loan you have to pay the principal amount and then financial assets not increasing because you are not getting anything in return for paying the interest so the capital expenditure primarily involves long term investments and asset acquisitions so asset acquisitions like building a hospital it is going to be an asset for the government so and even long term investments like infrastructure that is construction of highways etc infrastructure development is going to be a sort of long term investment so such expenditures come under capital expenditure consider the seventh question now according to karnataka state budget 2024 25 what is the main objective of the ashadipa scheme to promote employment opportunities for individuals from all communities to provide financial assistance to private sector enterprises to encourage skill development among individuals from scheduled castes and scheduled tribes to facilitate job creation in the public sector so here the right option is option c to encourage skill development among individuals from scheduled castes and scheduled tribes so if you look at the asha deepa scheme here the government of karnataka has introduced the asha deepa scheme to promote employment opportunities in private sector please note down not public it is private sector for individuals from scheduled castes and scheduled tribes scheduled castes as well as scheduled tribes so and it is implemented through the karnataka state workers welfare and social security society karnataka state workers welfare and social security society and the scheme aims to achieve the following objectives first of all it the scheme facilitates job creation for individuals belonging to scst in private sector sc and st categories in private sector enterprises so by doing this obviously uh, it also aims to enhance the socio economic status of scs and sts and also it promotes the hiring of scs and sts in private sector establishments by reimbursing the employer's contribution towards esi and epf providing financial assistance so if a person a has joined a company called xyz and if this person belongs to sc or st community and if this xyz is a private company and this person a belonging to sc or st has joined this company then the government will reimburse employees contribution towards esi and epf so this person this employee a will have esi and epf for which the company contributes every month so whatever the company contributes to esi and epf that particular amount will be reimbursed by the government of karnataka so by doing this it is promoting the employment of sc and st people in private sectors and also the another objective of the scheme is to reimburse stipends paid to apprentice trainees by employers so if a person called b has joined company a d e let us say a d e is a company and b Uh, belong to sc and st community sc or st community has joined there as apprentice trainee so when he has joined there as apprentice trainee this particular company ade has to provide certain stipend 
for the trainee stipend it has to provide certain stipend every month to the trainee so the government will in reimburse the government of karnataka is going to reimburse this stipend given by the company or the employer to the SCST candidate so this is another objective one more thing is offer reimbursement of 50% of wages up to a maximum of rupees 7000 per month if the employer hires the same apprentice after completion of the training now this person b has completed the training after completing the training if the company provides him the employment if the company provides him the employment then the government of karnataka will provide 50 percent of the wages either 50 percent of the wages or 7000 rupees whichever is maximum 50 percent of the wages or 7000 rupees whichever is maximum to the company so that the company will get some incentive or will get some encouragement by the government of karnataka to employ SCR SD candidates so by doing this the government of karnataka is trying to increase the labor participation rate of SCHD employees eighth question says which expenditure category is more focused on immediate operational needs we have already seen in one of the questions that immediate operational needs such as salaries and wages they come under a revenue expenditure therefore the right option is option a so the answer is revenue expenditure it is more focused on immediate operational needs like salaries and maintenance what percentage of central taxes was recommended to be allocated to states for the period 2021-2026 so 40 percent 41 percent 42 percent 43 percent so what the question is asking about the question is asking about the 15th finance commission 15th finance commission's recommendation so as per the accepted recommendations of the 15th finance commission the state's share has been fixed at 41 percent 41 percent of the net proceeds of the shareable central taxes shareable central taxes so the right answer is 41 percent so in the 14th finance commission in the 14th finance commission it was 42 percent however it has been reduced to 41 percent that is it has been reduced by one percent in the 15th finance commission and 14th finance commission had given its recommendations for the period 2015 to 2020 while 15th finance commission has given it for the period 2021 to 2026 and the adjustment one percent is to provide for the newly formed union territories of jammu and kashmir and ladakh from the resources of the center so whatever one percent has been reduced that one percent will be used for the new union territories that is union territories of jammu and kashmir and ladakh so the last question for the day is what is seva sindhu in the context of state government of karnataka it is an education program in karnataka no this is false a healthcare initiative by the karnataka government this is also false a transportation system implemented in rural areas of karnataka this is also false so the right option is an integrated platform for access in government services and schemes in karnataka so seva sindhu is an integrated platform what is the meaning of integrated so various department services the services of various departments are integrated into one single portal and it was initiated by the government of karnataka with an aim to provide citizens with convenient access to range of government services and schemes and then it streamlines the process of accessing these services by offering a unified system through which multiple services can be accessed so this is one portal but it provides access to multiple services please remember it provides access to multiple services through this platform citizens can apply for services online and also monitor the progress of their applications thereby minimizing the necessity for in-person visits to government offices so for example if you want to get cash certificate if you want to get cash certificate then you can apply it online and also monitor what is happening with your application online itself so you can also monitor the progress of their applications as well therefore this is just an example if you want to obtain a cash certificate then you can apply it online so how can you apply it using the seva sindhu portal the user friendly interface of seva sindhu ensures ease of navigation and also provides various comprehensive informations about the available services of the state government of karnataka and also it also 
details you about the application procedures. It encompasses various service categories including revenue, agriculture, transport, education, health, police among others allowing users to easily locate the specific service they require. So all the department services, most of the department services are available in the Seva Sindhu portal. So it encompasses various service categories including revenue, agriculture, transport, education, health, police among others. Therefore, we can say that Seva Sindhu extends its accessibility to citizens across Karnataka include those residing in rural areas. So please remember that not only urban but entire Karnataka, urban plus rural areas. It is going to provide accessibility to citizens across entire Karnataka without distinction between urban and rural areas, thus bridging the gap between government services and the people while eliminating or minimizing the requirement for physical visits to government establishments. So this is all about important MCQs about Karnataka budget in this video. Very, very important these points are. Please note it down and also please revise it regularly so that you won't forget and you will be able to get good marks in the prelims as well as mains examination. Thank you.